Let everything that has breath praise the Lord, praise Him. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord, praise Him. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord, praise Everything that has breath, praise the Lord, praise Him. And everything that has breath, praise the Lord, praise Him. And everything that has breath. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. This comes from the book of Psalms, chapter 150. The Lord speaking to us, to this generation, as He has spoken to our fathers and forefathers, telling them, through the mouth of King David. Let everything that breathes, everything that has received the ability to breathe, to praise the Lord, to declare the things of God. Hallelujah. So indeed, we living everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. Stop for me, please. Hallelujah. Indeed, we let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we honor you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your goodness and your grace uh, upon our lives. Uh, we asking that you lead us, you speak to us, you guide us into all things, and that you make it known, Lord God, as you say. You say, Lord, you will do something. You will do a new thing that we don't know, that we couldn't know. So, Lord, I thank you, God, that you are making the new thing even in this season. I bless your holy name for all that you have done and for what you're about to do right now. I thank God for all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Let everything that has breath say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We honor you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Just shout unto Jesus Christ. Jesus. Jesus! Jesus! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! You see, let me tell you something. We're going to continue on the word that God has given unto us last time. I will shout my faith through. You remember that word? Hallelujah! Today is the part two. Amen. Because you see, after they shout, they fell through, and then the wall fell. What happened? They penetrated. They entered, and they defeated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you don't just shout your faith through the wall fall, and then you are looking at the wall, taking pictures like in nowadays. days. Now they now they have camera everywhere. They have cell phone everywhere. When something happens, they just take pictures. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I'm going to go back to our word in the book of Mark, chapter 10. We're going to rebuild on it to continue. So Mark, chapter 10, we're going to start from verse 46. Hallelujah. Mark, chapter 10, from verse 46. Mark chapter 10, starting from verse 46. Mm -hmm. And they came to Jericho. And they came to Jericho. 
And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, and as he went out to Jericho with his disciple, and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, yes, sat by the highway side begging, mm -hmm. begging. Verse 47. Mm -hmm. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth. He began to cry out. He began to cry out. And say. And said. Jesus. Jesus. Thou son of David. Thou son of David. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal. But he cried the more a great deal. Thou son of David. Have, thou son of David. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still. And Jesus stood still. And commanded him to be called. And commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man. And they called the blind man. Saying unto him. Saying unto him. Be of good comfort. Be of good comfort. Rise. Rise. He called thee. Amen. Amen. And then they said unto the blind man. Now listen. The same people who told him be quiet. <laughs> The same people who told him, you know, this is not a time to battle the master. The same people turn around and now they are the one that God has assigned to go get the guy. Are you what I'm saying? Let, listen. If you don't understand the plans of God in your life, you won't get why people sometimes rise against you. You see, there is a purpose. It says, he will dress a table. Amen? In the presence of who? If God does not show himself, I say your God. Amen? If the God of Henry, the God of James, the God of Michelle, the God of Matthias, the God of uh, 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 Kayla, the God of Martin, if the God of uh, Olivia cannot show himself strong, let me tell you something. Then he's not a God. Because you see, God says, I will show my power. He speaks unto Moses. And he tells to Moses, go to Pharaoh. And the reason why I want you to go to Pharaoh is because I want to show my power. Do you, are you following what I'm saying? When you don't understand that the God you worship, he takes pleasure to demonstrate that he has power. You will think he's a weak God. He's a sissy God. Them God who don't have hands. Them God who don't have eyes. Them God who don't have mouth. Them God who don't have anything. The world is after them. But the God you worship. In the book of Thessalonians. Find for me. The Bible says. See. It is a good thing to God to reward those who troubles you. I believe the uh, second Thessalonians five seventeen or something like that, the first one. Hallelujah! Find for me. He says, "See, for it is a good thing." You found it. Okay, so second Thessalonians chapter one. Read for me, please. Second Thessalonians chapter 1, uh -huh. verse 6. Uh -huh. Saying, it is a righteous, it is a righteous thing, thing with, God with God to recompense, to recompense tribulation, tribulation to, them that trouble you. to them that trouble you. Give me that in uh, Amplify. <laughs> Uh -huh. Amplified. Mm -hmm. For after all, it is for only, after all, it is only just. It for is God only just for God to repay to repay with distress with distress those who distress you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Say you witches, you wizards, that is distressing my family, that is distressing my businesses, that is distressing my ministry. 
that is distressing my children. My God says, it is a good thing for him to repay you every distress that you brought in my family, that he brought in my businesses. Are you following? It is not me saying it. He says he takes pleasure. It is just for him to show his power. You know, there are a few things like uh, when we were little, if somebody has had an issue with you and the person tells you, I'm going to call my big brother. <laughs> you know right there, you need to negotiate peace. <laughs> Whether the big brother is big or he's small, you don't know. By the time the guy says, I'm going to call my big brother, you yourself, you know that you are in trouble. Now, God is not your big brother. He's your big God. Are you know what I'm saying? God is your big God. God is my big God. Tell, God is my big God. Are you know what I'm saying? You, you, you need to cement it in your mind, down in your soul, in your intellect, in your fingers, in your flesh, everywhere, so that uh, every imagination of your heart can submit to God saying, He is your big God. Bring down captives all imagination that rises itself against the knowledge of God. Well, you see, sometimes fear in you rises itself against the knowledge of God because fear tells you this is too difficult. Are you what I'm saying? Sometimes doubt in your heart tells you, am I going to make it? But now that's the time to tell to that doubt inside of you. My God says, it is a good thing to reward those who distress me. So if you are distressing me right now, he's going to get you. <laughs> Hallelujah. So God that I serve indeed is, is a big God. Now the same people, who told to the blind man, Shh. the same people the Lord told them. You see, the Lord could have called the blind man, come. He has voice. <laughs> Hallelujah. He appointed and sent the people. What it means is that the same people who deny you favor, the same people who deny you help, the same people who deny you opportunities, Listen, Abraham was walking with his wife. There was a king who saw him and his wife. When the king saw the wife, he started now planning distress for Abraham. Abraham finally gave up his wife. And the Bible said that in that night, God, hallelujah, Abraham did not go to the judge. Abraham did not go to the uh, king to have a, I would call it, negotiation. All he knew is that even in his, let me put it something. You see, Abraham lied. But even though he lied, this did not prevent God to deal with the king. Are you what I'm saying? When you are the anointed of God, it's between you and God. Are you what I'm saying? Are you what I'm saying? You see, uh, what's his name? King Saul. King Saul started becoming very evil, and he ended up being very evil. And David, God told him, hey, I dare you not touch that king. Hallelujah. Are you what I'm saying? What it means is that when God has appointed you for something, whatever happened in your life, he is in the control of his hands. If God does not want you to fall, you will not fall. If God wants you to be sifted as a weight, you remember that? Who? Peter. He said the devil has come to ask permission. Even the devil could not touch the anointed of God. The devil 
who thinks himself being something, the Bible says he is nothing. Why? Because the Bible says that in the book of, uh, um, no, 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 um, Revelation. That at the end of the days, they saw the little men. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's what the Bible says. That they saw that little thing that was troubling the whole world. The way the, way the devil works, he has a mirror over here. He has a mirror over here. He has a mirror over here. So when he stands like that, you see many mirrors of him. You think that he has is many. <laughs> you, eh? uh, optical effect. <laughs> he gives you an illusion of something that he is not. So the Bible tells that Abraham, afterward he has dealt treacherously with his wife. Normally, he should have said, baby, if they come, they will get me. They will pass over my dead body to get you. <laughs> That's normally what he should have said. He said, baby, if they come, please go. <laughs> go, I want to leave. <laughs> Are you what I'm saying? Amen. That's not the right way. But even though God went and spoke unto the king, the Bible says in that night, the Lord came and says, you are a dead man. He didn't tell him you're going to die. <laughs> Hallelujah. He already sentenced it. He said you are already dead. As you are speaking with me right now, you are on your deathbed. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Normally, that king, if he could have written something, I know he would have said, oh, I will sleep and then I died. And then the Lord sent me back. Because God says you are a dead man. Are you know what I'm saying? So the guy now, he is presenting himself before God. God said, hey, you, why did you take the wife of my prophet? The guy said, hey, he didn't tell me. He said, I don't care. Do you yourself, you should have, have wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. And he said, I'm going to give you one more chance. You're going to go back. But when you go back, you're going to not only restitute what you took, but you're going to give seven times what you took. Are you what I'm saying? And the Bible said, well, when he came back, he called quickly all his servants. He said, please take that way, get her out of here. Because the God of that guy has come visited me, taken my life away, telling me if I don't let what does not belong to me, he's going to trouble me. But it is a good thing for God to trouble those who troubles you. And now when you have shouted and entered into that place, of victory. You have shouted your faith through. You say, Lord, I know you are with me. I know you hold me. I know, Lord God, you support me. You have prayed. And then you know that regardless on how your feeble knees were feeble, you still stood up on your feet and said, Lord, help me walk into the destiny of the promise you gave me. And then the enemy comes. And the enemy takes some people. And they tell you, you are not worthy of this. You cannot make it. You will not make it. They will want to convince you that God told them. You see, the last time that there was a man, I'm going to say the last time I'm talking about the man of God in the Bible, who was spoken to, uh, to by God, who told him, you're going to deliver the message to the king, but when you arrive, make sure you don't take the same path that you have went in to come back. And do not stay there do not sleep there. Do not do anything there. When you go down and take another road, come back. The Bible said there was a whole prophet. You see, the problem with the whole prophet is that sometimes some of them has jealousy inside. Because you see, the whole prophet said, but why is that, is that God will go get that little boy when I'm actually I'm the whole prophet of the land? The Bible does not say the whole prophet just to say that he was holding age, but he was also that prophet for a long time in the land. And he looks at himself and said, why would, the Bible said, he sent his children. He said, go get that guy. Bring him back. And when they brought that child, I mean that child, when they brought the man of God back, this is how he started. 
He said, I am also a prophet. When somebody is trying to defraud you, amen. <laughs> because when you come and then the person, you, you say, let's say, oh, man of God, woman of God, God has spoken unto me that I should leave everything to serve him. And the persons are saying, me, myself, I'm a prophet also. We don't do like that. Then you know Sambala has spoken. Why? Because the covenant is not between you and the man. The covenant is between you and God. They did not say yea to a call of a man. You say yea to the call of God. Now, the problem is that even if the enemy is attempting to defraud you, to derail you, God says at the end of the day, if you keep it up, you got to keep on pressing. You see, the blind man, that's the, that's the word, he did not see. So sometimes you don't even see where you're going. You feel what I'm saying? You're walking, you're advancing, you're going, but you have no idea what you're doing. But God says all you need, if you have voice to... If you have a voice to shout, if you have a voice to pray, just lift up your voice. Don't be like a dumb man. Hallelujah. The difference between the dumb man and the blind man is that the dumb man, even if he see you cannot talk, that's, that's, that's not good. You, I want to speak. Because you see, if somebody pinch me and I, I take my eyes, it won't be interesting. If somebody pinch me, hey, hey, stop it. <laughs> I want to speak. So the girl did not have eyes, but he had a mouth. And he understood that regardless of the state of his vision, he has still the ability to attract the favor of God. I hear what I'm saying. Even if challenges are before thee, and it looks like it is a wall that, I, that, that prevents you to see what will be tomorrow of your life. If you have a voice, lift it up to God. The guy said, I know my situation, I know my life hasn't been easy. But, you know, sometimes you get to a place where things are so tough that you get used to it. You should not get used to it. Sometimes you get to a place where things don't work the way it should be working, and then you get used to it. You should not get used to it. Why? Because there is a pressure that brings in the oil. That is better. So the man says, even if I don't see, even if I don't have the fellowship with Christ being like his disciple, even if I'm just by the road. Amen. He was not among the twelve, was he? He was not. The twelve certainly felt like her. they were the best one that the Lord chose. Uh, and yet they were not. When you look at their life, they were as corrupt as it gets. Uh, yeah, was in it? I said, was in it. <laughs> Hallelujah. They were not the best. They had problem with anger. They had problem with the self, uh, uh, self righteousness. They had problem with the ego, ego, ego. They had problem with uh, pride. They had problem with law. They had problem with everything. They had. They were master of doubt. Am I, am I lying? The Bible said clearly that now they believe on him. But by the time the Bible said now they believe on him, they were with him for a long time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But now they believe. I, I that right now. You were, 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 were with me for a long time. Why, why is that now? But still, he used them. So even though the blind man was not part of them, even though he was the least of the least of the least of the least, even though he could not see, he said, I care not. The only thing I know is that there is something that was written in the book, in the book of Joshua concerning Jericho. I am at Jericho. I ain't going to let this prophetic sign pass me by. In the time of Jericho, the wall fell. In the same time of Jericho I am in, my eye shoe, the, the, the scale of my eye shoe, 
The guy understood that it, it did not need to be in the time of Joshua. He just needed to apply the time of Joshua to his life. Does it make sense? You do not need to be in... Sometimes things happen. And God is showing you some ideas. And you're thinking, eh, if I would have started early. Or you thinking, some people started whatever, and they already got better. And you're thinking to yourself... I should have started. No, 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 no. By the time you are in, is the time you can start. Because the same God who is able to bring in your life the ideas, the same God is able to also redeem the time. You know what I'm saying? So the God did not see for a long time. Even though he did not see for a long time, he said, I know the God that is passing by. I know that Jesus that is passing by. The Bible calls him the son of David. Why? Because he understood that the king, David talking about the king and the king, he understood that the king being a king or David being a king or a child or a person being a king, he understood that if you bring your problem to the king, you will have favor. And all you have to have is to access to the king. You need to have a one-on-one with the king. You see, what's her name? Uh, Esther. Esther understood that in the kingdom she could not attain to the king without being invited. She understood that the situation she was in with her, with uh, with uh, her, with the people, with the people, she understood that they were in the place where they were they were gonna die. And then. When Mordecai told her, listen, I want you to go, huh? Yeah. Uh, he, he told him, I to, uh, he told her, I want you to go to the king. And I want you to tell him about our situation. The first thing that came out of her mouth is, hey, if I do that, I die. Because I'm not invited. But then she realized that, all I need to do is to have an appointment with the king. So if I do not trigger it, if I do not provoke it, the king will never call me because the king does not know what's going with me. Are you what I'm saying? The blind man was sitting by. The Lord Jesus knew he had need. Am I, am I lying? The Lord Jesus knew the need that he has. The Lord Jesus knew he wanted to see. And the Lord knew very well. But you see, the problem sometimes of Christians is that they say, oh, this one, if it is of the will of God, it will just come to pass. You will wait. Because he said you have not because you ask not. So even though he knows, he wants you to ask. He said, ask, and you shall receive, and your joy shall be full. So the, the, the blind man understood that, hey, this is the son of David. But how did he know at that, at that time that this was the son of David? As I said last time, the fame of Christ went ahead of him. By the time he had the opportunity to feel or to sense the presence of God passing by, he tapped into it, he screamed out, he said, Lord, have mercy on me. Listen, all you need is not the big prayer. All you need is the sincerity of your heart. Lord, I am in trouble. Have mercy on me. You see? There are situations that requires you to fast and pray and fast and pray to enter warfare. But in this specific situation, he didn't pray for two days. He didn't pray for three days. Hallelujah. In that specific situation, he only screamed. Sometimes you pray, but you pray too quiet. You've been praying too quiet for 25 years. <laughs> Are you what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to get yourself to a place. God! Now, 
Now, somebody could think, why do you need to scream? Is God not hearing you? <laughs> but you see, what you're doing is the demonstration of your need. When you have a need, you don't care on how you sound. When you have a need, you don't care on how you look. When you have a need, you know the one who can supply to your need is passing by. He's standing by. You ain't going to play it nice. Because there are times when it is your one-time shot. They call you, they say, hey, if you don't pay back this money you owe, we're going to send you to the court. You know you have no money. Hallelujah. What do you do? Oh, Lord, would you please, 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 please. God! <laughs> Listen, one time I was in a situation where we were coming from, uh, we were moving, and as we were moving to come here from uh, where we used to live, we packed everything, and we were driving. I had a UO that was a big UO. My wife was right behind me with the car. And as we were driving, suddenly my feet, both feet, both leg, suddenly became crampy. I could not use them anymore. So we were at the red, uh, not red light. I, I were at the stop sign. And being at the stop sign, I was, I was driving like a, a, a whole 95-year man. Like I was driving with very much care. Looking around, looking around, making it at the wonder. So we come at a stop sign. Arriving there, I look. I look. It's clear. It's clear. Now, I'm about to put on the, how would you say that? Accelerator, my leg become numb. And the car goes. And I said the car goes, the, the big UO goes. It was a big one. I was almost like an 18-wheeler, but it was not. <laughs> so I go. My leg could not respond. I don't know what to do. So I'm thinking I'm going to continue going and try by any means to put my hand under or do something to stop it and turn off and stop there at the, at the safe place. So I pass the stop sign. As I go, there was nobody. But suddenly, there is somebody appearing. I don't know whether the devil sent her. I don't know whether she came from hell. I know where not where she come from. But suddenly, here's a lady with a car. Boom! And the car goes in the room, room, room. And I'm like, no way. No way. So, to make it short, I finally park, come back, look in. A car was total. But thank God she came out. Alive. <laughs> so she came out alive. The police came, yara yara. They did all the paperwork. And the lady happened to be a type of pastor. I say a type of pastor because she was a pastor of the gay. So <laughs> it's later I found out. Anyway, but regardless, so she tells me right there, it's, it's okay, it's okay, I'm fine. Few times after, I receive a letter. That letter comes from, like a letter I call the letter of Jezebel. And the letter, no, not from her, but from her, her lawyers. So the letter arrives, and it says, I should hire a lawyer because we have trouble. Ah! A lawyer sends you a letter, I say a letter, a letter, and tells you, you should hire a lawyer because you will have trouble. We will be on you. When I received that letter, you know what I did? Imagine. Uh huh. I took the letter. I went to that corner. At that time, there was no too much uh, share on the back. I went to that corner. I put it on the altar. Hey, 
Jesus. I break this in the name of Jesus. Hey. Now, you thinking I was being too much. Seven years today, nothing happened after. Are you what I'm saying? Nothing happened. All I did was not to fast and pray. No, I need to eat sometime. <laughs> okay. All I did was to enter into the shout mode, to enter into the ah, I say, you devil, I break, I scream on that lie. Hey, when I finish, I was done. And then my mind never went back to it. But by the time I went to the mailbox and I took that letter and I read it, my heart, my, my, my heart just dropped. <laughs> Then I understood it was a spiritual warfare. Then I understood that he would have happened something to me if I would have nourished the mindset or the thought of what should I do? What will I do? How will I do? Where should I go? I say no, Annette, I refuse it. Shout your faith. Having God being on your side like a this blind man, all he knew is that there was favor passing at that time. There was mercy passing at that time. He screamed, he said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Now, listen, after you have entered Jericho, I'm sorry, after you, the wall of Jericho have fallen, after you feel no longer the doubt, after you feel, you know, not you feel, you know you have, the doubt has, has departed from your heart. After you know that the anxiety, because there are certain anxiety that give you headache and, and cephaly. You know cephaly? Uh, I would say that. Not uh, cephaly, uh, Migraines, yeah. There are some of anxiety, anxiety that give you migraines, and then you can feel like your head will explode. Your 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 blood goes straight into like in, in your blood just go up, and then and your head is heavy. If you put, if you do like this, you will hear your heart. That type of anxiety will kill you before the problem even comes. So when God tells you, be anxious for, because he does not want you to die. You, you see, listen, you have a problem. You're anxious, you die. The people come to the funeral, they give money. That money is to bury you. It's not to help you. <laughs> Let me read again. You have a problem. You are anxious and anxiety kills you. And the people now come and they gather money and they bring it. That money is not to raise you up. It's to bury you. So when he tells you to not be anxious for nothing, is what? You should not let what is coming to you as a blessing just bury you. You should see it. Let me repeat again. Be anxious for nothing means that stop Killing yourself or being a candidate for death, remove the anxiety and wait to rejoice for the blessing is coming. You know what I'm saying? Because if the blessing has arrived and you're dead, what is the need for it? Somebody say, every aborted blessing uproots you. I cancel you in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, there are, let me explain what it means, aborted blessing. It means that you have toil. And when the time arrives for you to benefit, either you die or either something happens and then you cannot benefit what you have toiled for. 
or what was on the way to bless you. I call it aborted blessing. You have waited for a long time. Some people, they have to marry. And they call together for a long time. And they marry. And they go to uh, wed. no, no, after the wedding. Honeymoon. And the day of the honeymoon, something happened. Either the husband or the wife died. You see what I'm saying? So aborted blessings happens when inside of you, there is something that gives room to it. That's why it says, be anxious for nothing. So the blind knew that he could not have because he was limited. He could not see because he was limited. He knew that even though he could go some steps, he could not go further because he was limited. He knew it. But he cared less about his actual stature. You have to come to a place where you do not care about how much the problem is. You have to come to a place where you do not care how big or how problematic this can be. You got to come to a place where you do not care. You see, there is a difference between being irresponsible and being at peace. Irresponsible is that you are not taking the good step and the further step, but your peace is not in the Lord. It's just like you just irresponsible. <laughs> Hallelujah. Being at peace is that uh, you are certain that the Lord is telling you, be calm. You are certain that the Lord tells you, just be calm. Be still and know that I am God. Let's read again. Chapter 10 of Mark. Verse, still the verse 10, uh, I said 10, 46. Mm -hmm, let's read. Then, then they came to Jericho, and as he was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a large crowd, a blind beggar, Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, was sitting beside the road as I well. told you last time that the Bartimaeus means what? Eventually, as the Bible says, the son of Timaeus. There are certain spiritual or certain authority you may have or you may allow over your life that will cause you not to have certain blessings. I'll repeat again. The authority, best, the supreme authority you are to allow over your life is the word of God. When the word of God said this, you do it. When the word of God said that, it shall happen. If you allow any authority by the word of God, it will happen, you will be in the same condition for a long time. Let me explain. The word of God will tell you, be strong and be courageous. Be not anxious. That's the authority, right? When you allow the anxiety, which is an authority by itself, which is the spirit authority, hallelujah, coming from the powers, the principalities, hallelujah. When you allow those spirits to hold you with anxiety, what happens is that you are yourself giving room and a slowing or canceling the hands and the move of the blessing of God in your life. Does it make sense? So you not being anxiety and anxious is to demonstrate that even though the son of Timaeus is to demonstrate that even though there is something that is un, that is unruly, there is something that is not normal, there is something that is dysfunctional. Even though that thing is around, I know that I will have to get myself out of that place. As I said last time, I have we have to cut off with the false father. And we have to cut off with the wrong father. The father here is the authority that is uh, governing your heart, your mind, your, your, your intelligence, your, your emotions. The authority that is governing your intelligence can be money, can be 
the can, can mean famine in the land, can be the bad news, can be the government, can be whatever. When you listen, for instance, the news, and then they are telling you, ah, everything is getting bad, that uh, there is inflation, da, 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 and you allow that in your heart, it becomes the authority over you. So you will now be affected by that inflation because that inflation will rule you. Are uh, you what I'm saying? But even though there is inflation and you don't allow it, now there is inflation. No, 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 no. When they finish to say that, you say, praise God, because your riches will inflate. <laughs> Hallelujah. You need your riches to inflate, not to deflate. Hallelujah. So you allow God and his word to be your sole authority over your life by saying, Lord, you have said so. And what you have said, that's what I'm going to believe. And it settles it, period. Even though they are telling me I should be quiet. Even though they are telling me I should be slowing down. Even though they are telling me that I cannot make it. All I know, I will shout it do. Why did he shout? Because he knew that was his portion. He knew. That was his portion. He knew that the word of God, he knew that the ways of God, he knew that the works of God that was already performed has come to his hearing. So now he's in the environment, he's in the perimeter. Will he let go? No. How long have you been waiting for a shift? How long have you been waiting for an open door? Hallelujah. And the Lord said, what I want you to do is to take conscience, to be co uh, conscious, to, to be conscious that it belongs to you, so you must not ask, you must now demand. You see, the the law, the how oh, they call them, the people at the Congress. No, 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 at the Congress. The re 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 so there's at the Congress, and then at the Senate is Senator, right? At the Congress is a congressman. Congressman William. They are supposed to be there to represent who? Okay. So, I'm going to give you an example. So, they are there to represent the people. But you agree with me that one of them is usually for 40,000 people or for 10,000, depending on the, the district. So, you agree with me that when one represents a district and that district has 100,000 or 200,000, you agree with me that if the 200,000 have problem, they will all converge to that representative. Now, since he's only one, he cannot deal with the problem of everybody. Even if he wants to deal with the problem of everybody, he will take time. So this is what you will do when you know that your portion is yours. First thing, is that even though there is no space to enter, even though there are many that are in need, even though there are many that needed to speak to him, I know one thing, my portion is there. Are you know what I'm saying? For the Bible said there was a crowd following Jesus. And the Bible said that wherever he went, many came that were sick, Many came. So I could imagine the lines. The guy was just sitting. <laughs> Are you know what I'm saying? He was just sitting. And on the top of sitting, you could not see. But he careless. He knew 
that today is my portion. I care less that there is a line. I care less that there is no possibility. I care less that the things are closed. Even if it's time of COVID, you say everybody went home, I will call the office. I will submit my case. But the word of God says in the book of Isaiah chapter 43, it says, come, let us discuss your case. And then, hallelujah. So that conviction in you is because you know that the portion that is yours, the Lord is assigning it to you and you must demand it. Before I did not know it. But when I understood, like uh, the blind man, all you want is to make sure that what is yours comes in your hands. Because remember, the devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. So even if it is yours, and then you sit and you say, oh, if this is for me, the will of the Lord will be done. Remember, the devil is a thief. He will not just sit around, do nothing, and let it go. Bring me back, Mark, so we finish. Bring me back, Mark. Mark chapter 10, verse 46. Then they came to Jericho. And as he was leaving Jericho with his disciple and a large crowd. And a large cr crowd. A blind beggar. A ba blind beggar. Bartimaeus, mm -hmm. the son of Timaeus, was sitting beside the road as was his custom. Mm. When Bartimaeus heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout and say, Jesus, son of David, Messiah, have mercy on me. But listen, I don't know if you understand. Lord Jesus, help my people. I don't know if you get that point. You may feel that you are reading the story of somebody, but that's where you are missing it. That's not the story of somebody. That is my story. Uh, you feel what I'm saying? That is your story. At the time of the now, Lord, help them. If you miss what God is doing right now, you will read this and you will go back home just as you came. Does it make sense? This is not a story for the word of God said that my word is spirit and my word is not, is not, I will call it CNN. It's not news. My word is spirit and life. The word that was pronounced at the time of Adam and Eve, that word still gives life to the time of Christ, to the time of today, and to the time to come. Does it make sense? So I have to position myself to possess that word. When I say demand, means what? The word says that your condition even if there is a large crowd that is needed in the same condition, the word says that you have seen yourself in that. And as you see yourself to that, you cannot claim by saying, this is mine. Do you understand what I'm saying? Let me repeat. Let me give you an example. I was in a position where I knew I could not have any help at all. And I was reading the word of God in the book of Genesis and I saw the flood, and the water stayed over the earth for 150 days. When I saw it, I claimed it. I said, God is speaking to me. And I told to one of my cellmate, I told him, I said, listen, God is telling me that in 150 days, I will be free. The guys are laughing to me. And not me. Because there was no way and no possibility for me to have relief in 150 days. Minimum was 365, the meaning one year, before I get to have the judge to hear me. But as I read that word, I saw God with clarity speaking to me. 
that word like jump in my face, in my eye. I was sitting by that road. I saw that word that Christ passing by. And even though I was the one reading it, it was clear that God was speaking. Without clarity, I told with certainty that this will happen. 149 days later, I was brought before the judge. And 150 days, I was free. You know what I'm saying? Now the guy was like, hey, pray for me. Pray. I said, Yo, what I was telling you then, you didn't believe. <laughs> I'm gone. <laughs> and this has happened in my life many times. Why? Because I trust the word of God. Even when I fail. Because the one that fails is not God, it's me. So when God says this is going to happen to you and doubt is in my heart, it's me who is failing that promise. But when I realize that somebody is speaking to me, when I realize that there are spirit and principalities that are stealing what God says will happen, I say I refuse it. And I do see God working. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? You see, I, I tell you, you got to be in the revelation. Bartimus, nobody tell, told him shout, okay? Nobody. But everything that they told him was contrary. It was be quiet. I, I, I what I'm saying. If you have need, you know what to do. If you have a need... And that you know that this must be done. You know what to do. You need to utilize what the word of God says. That the, the spirit, the anointing that is in you will teach you all things. And whatever it teaches you is true. So you need to utilize it to know that the anointing is teaching you right now. That if you have need, you know what to do. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus, son of David, today have mercy on me. Let every case in my life, let everything in my life, every promises that was set for me, let it come pass now. For I know. That is the same who is faithful. The same who is faithful. I know. I will see. I will possess. I know. Because the same who is faithful. Last time I told you that I do not say, Lord, thank you. Because the circumstances is good. I do not say, Lord, thank you. Because the circumstances is bad. I say, thank you. Because he is faithful. So I know. He going to see you through. He going to see us through. I know he going to see it. And I know with certainty. I know and I know and I know and I know that I know. Blind Bartimaeus, Bartimaeus, he knew. He could not see, but he knew. You don't need to see to know. You must know to see. Hallelujah. He could not see, but he knew. And with strength, conviction, and determination, 
Il se dit, tu as la peine. Don't let blessings surprise you. Like you are sitting and it falls like a mango out of the tree. <laughs> Hallelujah. Provoke it. Because you see, if your faith is not a faith that provokes heaven, then your faith is not faith. The difference between faith and grace is that grace you receive without merit. Faith, you cause it to manifest. So faith is the evidence. So the Lord is saying to you and to I, that indeed, he gives us the power and the ability to cause it to. You see, people who don't want you to advance, they say, oh, don't worry. If this is the will of God, it will happen. Meanwhile, you broke. <laughs> Meanwhile, you lost everything. And then, what they're saying does not come from God. Are you know what I'm saying? It does not come from God. For the will of God is clear. So many times in the word of God it is written, this is the will of God towards you. Hallelujah. And to make it simple, when a father gives his will to his child or his children, it is written. So how do you know the will of God? Hallelujah. That's what it means. In the technologic, in the technological, technical, technological way, in the law, this is called the will. Are you know what I'm saying? This is called the will. And if your father is a billionaire and he left a will, and you don't know what is inside, you will be broke until you die. Are you what I'm saying? Because the people who were covetous, the people who were jealous of your father, they will do everything to steal your belonging. One is called the devil. Whose job description is just to go around and steal? I, I, are you what I'm saying? So, your father gave you his will. You thinking in your mind, the whole testament, the new testament. No, that's the will of God. When he went himself in the court of heaven and he established what should happen to my children after I have left the earth. I will leave them my will. So, what is the matter that is a matter with me? Ah, Lord, let me see which part of your will deal with that. And then he tells me, remember this, O Jacob and Israel. Thou hast my servant. It is settled. Because anywhere I will open and be in that word, I will find his. If you get this one right, then you have it right. Are you what I'm saying? If not, you will take it for Bible study. You will have nothing. <laughs> Let me say it again. You see, if your daddy in the physical left you a will, and then you study it, what would you have? Study the word of God is not to receive, it's to be efficient in the work. Let me read again. When you study the work of God, I said the work of God, the word of God is to be efficient, is to be equipped to do the work of God. But for you to receive, you must know that this is the will for you. Do I, do I make sense to you? 
Because if not, you can study this word and be very, very efficient into the workmen of ministry. And then you are broke like the workmen of... <laughs> I hear what I'm saying. You must know the difference between this being the work of God, meaning the, the, the tool for the work of God, and this also being your. You see, if a father leave a will, he can write inside, okay, the two buildings I have in Russia, the one that costs one billion is for my son Joseph Israel. This is me. Amen. Ah, you put your name there. I'm going to put your name. <laughs> I'm prophetic. So, and then he says, okay. And then the people will build the second section of it that is found in China. The portion that says the people will build the second section of it that is found in China. This one is the work that the people should do to benefit me. Does it make sense? That portion will give me the instruction of what people must do in order to have the second portion of the wheel. So it equips me with knowledge and blueprint so I can direct correctly the people. But I must know that if I use it to only direct them to build and I do not Realize that the building is mine. They will build and I will still be there. Does it make sense? I will equip them and then I'm not equipped. Hey. No. This is the will of my father. When I want to consult, the Bible said David consulted with the Lord. Are you what I'm saying? That's what it means. To consult with the Lord, he had the law in which he could see in. Nehemiah, when they came back, they consulted with the Lord through what? The word. You have the word. If you pray and then you don't know what is written for your will, for the will of God towards you, your prayer will become just sounding brass. Because you pray outside of the will. And James put it in a simple way that if you pray and you doubt, why do you doubt? Because you do not understand the will. You do not know the will. So you kind of like a, maybe God wants that for me. Maybe he doesn't want. Yeah, you will wait. But I know. Somebody say, I know. I know. I know. What plans and what thoughts that God, my father, has for me. He says, plans. For future, plans for prosperity, plans for blessings. Are you following? For I know the thoughts that I have. You got to tell to yourself, for I know the thoughts that God has towards me. You have to tell to your mind to believe it. I. You must tell to your feet to believe it. You must tell to your fingers to believe it. Because you are supposed to touch everything and prosper it. I speak to my fingers. I know the thoughts that God has towards me. I speak to my feet. I know the thoughts that God has towards me. That every place that the sole of my feet will tread upon, I shall possess it. Everything that my hand will touch shall prosper. Every sea, every sight that I see, I will possess it. For I know the thoughts that he has towards me. 
I was not yet born. And he planned and he had thoughts towards me. This demonstrates that it is regardless and irrelevant of who I am. It is depending on who he is. Because while I did not even know who God was, he still knew me. Are you following what I'm saying? And he said, I know the thoughts that I have towards you. The only thing that will take it away will be the lie of the devil making me believe that I am not the one. I am not the appointed. I am not the servant. I am not the favored. I am not the graced one. I am the one. I am the appointed. I am the favored. I am the servant. I am the son. I am the everything. For he said so before. Papa Pashata Bakata. This is the will of my father to me. This is the will of my father. You got to believe it. You got to confess it. You got to have the certainty of it. You got to know it. You got to understand it. You got to practice it. You got to work with it. You got to command into it. You got to demand it. You got to plus into it. For word of God is the word of certainty. The word of truth. For all the promises of God are yes and amen. I am not following Buddha. I am not following Marikari. I am not following whatever. The Bible said that all the promises of God are here and amen. In Christ Jesus, I am following Christ. And the promises of Abraham are mine. For the word of God has clarified and, and clarified with clarity that the, all those blessings are my inheritance. I was not born, he thought of it. I was not yet conceived in my mother's womb, but he thought of it. And you see, he made sure to get this word to exist, to remain until I know it. Are you what I'm saying? Every king that rose against the word of God, every kingdom that rose against the word of God, every president, every nation, every power, he made sure to keep his word until I see it. What would I have become? What would I have become if I did not know this word? I would have only believed the lie. I would have only believed the lie. And that would have guided me with the deceit and the disillusion. But the God that you and I serve, that same God preserved his word as a testimony. He preserved his word. So I know, don't that I hope, I know that this is the will of my king towards me. Yeah, you prophetic. If you have your Bible, just grab it, put it in your head. Hallelujah. There are Bible over here if you don't have any. You can come distribute Bible to those who don't have. Hallelujah. Put it on your head. You know why? This is the prophetic act. You see, in the Bible, the Bible talks about the, the king who was spoken by the prophet by telling him, just uh, shoot out of the window the arrows you have in your hand. There are times of battle you need to step in and the power of God needs to take over. Hallelujah. So right now, in a, somebody give the Bible to my wife for, for, for the boy so she can put it on, on his head. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Nobody shall be left behind. Somebody help and put the Bible on the head of that boy over there. Hallelujah. Nobody shall be left behind. Nobody shall be left behind. Ah, nobody shall be left behind. I shall not 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 be left behind. For the will of my father, I am carrying it. Hey, I am carrying the will of my father. I am carrying the will of my father. I am carrying the will of my father. Everywhere I go, I am carrying the will of my father. Everywhere I walk, I am carrying the will of my father. Everywhere I stand, I am carrying the will of my father. For he says, this is the will of God towards you. I carry it. The prosperity that belongs to me, I carry it. The finances that belong to me, I carry it. The ministry that belongs to me, I carry it. The children that belong to me, I carry it. The businesses that carry it, that belongs to me, I carry it. The life that he has set for me, I carry it. For he said, this is the will of the Lord. We seal that will. We seal that will. And now we make ourselves one with your will. We make ourselves a one and unique with your will. For we step into the fullness of thy will. And as we speak, Lord God, you say that in that day we shall ask. In that day we shall receive. In that day our joy will be full. So today is our joy for things that have been held. Come out now. Things that have been bound, lose now. Things that have been buried, Come out, out now. Things that was delayed, come quickly. Things that was broken, be restored. For the power of God is at work right now in my life. Right now in this place. Right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 